Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel here. Uh, in today's video, we are going to take a look at a very simple algorithm on how some social media applications will uh, print out their dates inside of their apps. So let me show you what that looks like first, and then we'll dive into the code on uh, how to implement this feature. So this screenshot here is of YouTube on the red and then Facebook in the blue and then this Instagram app for our Instagram course uh, on the right. So the thing that they all have in common is the way they print out these events using this uh, minutes ago and you know X seconds ago inside of their uh, applications. So we have 30 minutes and then we have you know 35 minutes, three hours ago and just now for this guy. And then likewise for the Instagram we have you know one day, four days and also one week, you know, two weeks ago, so on and so forth. So the algorithm that an interviewer might potentially give you is, uh, for example, given a date, a date in the past, I want you to print out the date so that it looks like this format instead of some kind of raw date formatted string. So how do we do that? Well, let me show you what the algorithm implementation looks like inside of Playgrounds right here. And the reason why I like, I like going through these exercises is, be, is because it really allows you to explore what the Swift syntax kind of looks like, right? So the way to kind of uh, start this process is to construct a date object using this syntax here. And I'm just going to call it now and kind of let the uh, playground do its work. And it prints out 411 on March 27th, uh, which is right now at 411. And to kind of get a date in the past, all you have to do is to say past date equals date with this constructor of time interval since now. Uh, if you want to use a date in the past, use a negative value. And this will give you uh, negative five seconds kind of in the past year. And the way that you can, you can tell this is to kind of get the description out of this date object. And it kind of tells you that this occurred at uh, 10 instead of 15, which is five seconds ago. So that's how you tell. I'm going to remove the description because I actually want the, the date object instead, uh, instead of the description string. So now uh, you need to kind of implement this algorithm here. And I'm going to use an extension on date like this. And inside of this extension, I'll have this function that is called time ago display. And this uh, returns some kind of string, which I'll just return an empty string for now, which means that I can call pass date dot time ago display. And this will give me this empty string that I have in here. So one, two, three gives me one, two, three on the right. So now we're kind of ready to uh, implement what time ago display needs to be. Uh, so the reason why I like using an extension is because inside of these applications, you'll have to, or you'll find yourself using this display in many, many places. So making it an extension is kind of the perfect way of uh, making sure you don't duplicate your code. So what does time ago display look like here? Well, let's start off by getting something called seconds ago and let it equal to uh, the past date. Let's see, not past date, but date right here. And we'll use time interval since date. And we'll just use the value of self, which is date in this case. So I'm just going to return seconds ago like that. And we'll use uh, seconds ago. All right. So what does that give us? Well, that gives us, you know, roughly five seconds ago. And the reason why we get this really, really long number is because this right here, time interval since some kind of date gives you a double. And to fix that, we'll just kind of round it off using the int uh, casting like that or constructor, I guess you'll call it. And it gives you uh, five seconds ago. So that's pretty good. Now, what happens if we instead use uh, 60 seconds inside of our pass date constructor? Well, we get uh, 60 seconds ago, right? And that might be okay 60 seconds ago, but if you see something like 65 seconds ago, this date printout looks a little bit weird and it should really say one minute ago. So how do we kind of, you know, modify the algorithm so that we can use seconds ago and then minutes ago in the same function. Well, this is pretty simple if you prioritize on 
this display first. So what I mean is, I want to say if seconds ago is less than 60, we will use this display. So I'm going to paste that in there. Otherwise, I'm going to divide this by 60 and then we'll get perhaps uh, minutes ago. So with this implementation, this modification, we get minutes ago, one minutes ago, not correct grammar, but that's what we'll use for now. And then if we bring it back to perhaps negative 15, we'll get the 15 seconds ago instead. So that's kind of how this works. Uh, what I want to also do is to use 60 for one minute and show you what happens if we uh, multiply that by 60. So we have the same problem where instead of 60 minutes ago, this really should say one hour ago. And that's more apparent if you use perhaps 62. This says 62 minutes ago. One hour ago looks a lot better. So we apply the same fix or the same logic here to uh, make sure we get the correct printout. So the if uh, 60 seconds ago, I'll say else if seconds ago is less than 60 times 60, then we'll use this minutes display. Otherwise, we will divide the 60s, uh, the seconds ago by another 60 and use an hours display. So that's how you get one hour instead of the minutes. And uh, this still works for perhaps 30 minutes ago, which is what 60 times uh, 30 is. And it still works for seconds ago as well. So perhaps, you know, 12, and we get 12 seconds ago. So that's what we get. And let's see. All right, so 65, you know, we get an hour ago. And we'll fix the hours plural maybe a little bit later. So the same uh, type of problem occurs if you take 60 times 60 right here times 24. And now we get 24 hours ago. So this is, you know, something that you just have to keep catching as you go along inside of this if statement. I'm going to go else if seconds ago is less than 60 times 60 times 24, which is a day. Then we'll use this print statement here. Finally, we'll divide the last guy by 24, uh, 24, and then we'll just use days ago at the very end, which we'll get uh, one day ago for, you know, 25, uh, 24 hours ago is what this is. So this is, uh, you know, not too bad, but this right here gets a little messy is what I'll call it. You know, you might not be able to read this so easily when you come back to the code in a week or two. So how do we fix this so that we don't have so many 60s, 24s, and even if you multiply this by another value, like perhaps seven, this really needs to say one week ago instead of seven days ago. So let me just uh, catch this as well. So if seconds ago is less than 60 times 60 times 24 times seven, which is a week, we'll use the day display down here. And then just like what we did before, we'll divide this by seven and use the weeks uh, unit. So we get one weeks ago, right? And uh, the fix for all of these 60s, 24s, and 7s is to introduce your kind of your own unit system here. So to make this simple, let me just type let 60 or let minute equals 60. And 60 is just 60 seconds, which is what these units are. And that'll allow you to kind of define some more units. For example, hour equals uh, 60 times 60, so 60 minutes uh, times this minute guy right here instead. So that gives you an hour. And then finally, you can say let day equals uh, 24 times hour. And then you can say let uh, week equals seven times day. And then you can also define month to be perhaps uh, four times a week. Okay, so that's how this works right here. So how do I use this? Well, to make this a lot easier to read, you can just define these using the actual English objects here your units that you just created. And if this is, uh, if the seconds ago is less than a minute, we use seconds. So that's, uh, makes a lot more sense when you say it out loud in English. And inside of here, if the seconds ago is less than an hour, we will use the minutes. And you can even morph this to use minutes as well, which is 60 and 60 here. And this 60 times 60 times 24 is actually the day. And this is the uh, hour like that. And you kind of see this pattern as you move down the chain. 
and uh, this is the week guy and this is uh, an actual day right here and the logic still holds and this right here is actually uh, a week of time so we're actually just getting the quotient value when we divide these guys by these units and you get one week if we go back to perhaps you know 60 seconds so this is a minute it'll say one minute ago so let me hit the okay one minutes ago and then you know perhaps times two we get two minutes ago and then we get 62 which is one hour ago and then you know likewise with times uh, 24 we get one day ago so that's kind of how that works there all right, so this is just one very simple and very brief way of kind of implementing this feature inside of your applications. And it's super helpful because I've had to do this about five to six times for a lot of my production applications. And also, if you want to check out the Instagram course, you can find a link to the course preview down in the description below. And also, like, subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.